a story about the elf who wanted a boat. Paul had a fine toy boat. It was painted blue with a little red stripe and had lovely oars, very small, both painted blue to match the boat. His uncle had given it to him for his birthday. Paul would rather have had a sailing ship, but he was very pleased with the dear little boat. May I go and float it on the stream? he asked his mother. Yes, dear, she said. And look out for my ring, won't you? Oh, Mummy, I am sorry you lost that, said Paul, giving her a hug. His mother had dropped her ring into the water the last time she had walked by the stream and had not been able to find it, though she and Paul had looked for a whole hour. Off went Paul, carrying his little boat. He soon arrived at the stream and launched the blue boat on the tiny ripples. It floated beautifully, and Paul was pleased with it. When he had played with it for some time, he thought he would like to go and watch the rabbits in the field nearby. So he tied his boat to the overhanging branch of a willow tree and left it bobbing up and down on the water. He watched the rabbits for a long time. Then he thought he would go back and fetch his boat. So off he went to the stream again, and his boat wasn't there. The string was still hanging to the branch, but the boat had gone. Someone's cut the string and taken it away, thought Paul. Oh, what a shame. My new boat, too. I wonder who it could have been. I haven't seen anyone come this way at all. He looked up the stream and down, but there was no one in sight. Perhaps the string broke itself and the boat floated away, he suddenly thought. I'll look and see if it is bobbing up and down somewhere not far away, all by itself. He followed the stream and looked carefully in all the little corners of the bank. No, there was no boat. It was very disappointing. And then he suddenly saw it. It was some way ahead, floating merrily right in the very middle of the stream. Paul ran along the bank till he caught up with it. And then he stopped still in the greatest astonishment, for there was someone in it. It was a very tiny elf, just big enough for the boat. He was rowing with the little blue oars, and as he rowed, he recited a little verse. I've a little boat of my own, my own, and I'm voyaging off alone, alone, down the stream and across the pond, away to the sea and the big beyond. Paul stared in surprise. He didn't know whether to be cross or not. How dare the elf take his birthday boat as if it were his very own? He watched the little creature rowing hard and fast. He seemed very happy indeed. Paul wondered if he should let him keep the boat. No, it's naughty of him to take it without asking, he thought. I must call him. Hi, he shouted. Hi, what are you doing? The elf was so surprised that he nearly fell out of the boat. He stopped rowing and looked round. Are you calling me? he shouted in a tiny silvery voice. What's the matter? Can't you see I'm rowing? Of course I can, said Paul. But why have you taken my boat? You oughtn't to take other people's things, you know. That's very wrong. Oh dear, cried the elf in dismay. Is this your boat? Oh, I thought it was a stray one that belonged to nobody. So I took it for mine, because I've always wanted one all my life long. And it fits me so beautifully, doesn't it? Yes, but it's my boat, said Paul. You ought to give it to me back. Oh, I will, said the elf, and he began rowing to the bank. He jumped out when he got there and pulled the little blue boat to shore. That's the biggest disappointment I've ever had, he said with a sigh. I've longed and longed for a boat like this and never had one. I made up a little poem about it, too. I was just going off on my adventures. Paul was sorry for the tiny creature. He really did look very miserable. The little boy couldn't bear to take the boat from him. It's all right, he said to the elf. You can have it for your own and go adventuring in it if you like. What? cried the elf. Don't you want it? Well, I do want it really, said Paul. But you want it more than I do, so I'll give it to you. Jump into it again and row off while I watch you. You kind boy, cried the elf. You very generous boy. Oh, thank you. But do, do tell me what you'd like in exchange for it. I must give you something. I really must. I don't want anything, said Paul. Really, I don't. Mummy wouldn't like me to take anything for being kind. She says, if you're kind and you expect something back for it, you're not really being kind at all. So if you don't mind, I'll just give you the boat for nothing because you badly want it. But I must give you something, cried the elf, quite upset. I really must. Can't you think of anything? 
Or isn't there something I can do for you? Paul was just going to say no, there wasn't, when a thought came into his head. There is something, he said. I wonder if you really could do it for me. It's not for myself, but for my mother. She lost her ring in the water last week, and we couldn't find it. I suppose you couldn't get it for me. Of course I could, cried the elf in delight. Easiest thing in the world. Half a minute. Ho there, Newt, cried the elf. Go and seek for a ring that was dropped in the water. It will be hidden somewhere in the mud. The Newt disappeared under the water. Paul was most astonished that it should understand what the elf had said. Before he had time to wonder very long, the Newt came back. It popped its head above the water again, and in its mouth was... What do you think? Yes, you're right. The ring. It was a diamond one, and it shone and sparkled brightly in the sunshine. The elf got into the little boat, rowed to the Newt, and took the ring from its mouth. He patted the creature on the nose and thanked it. It vanished beneath the water, and the elf rowed back to the bank. Here you are, he said, and gave Paul the ring. Now, are you sure you wouldn't like me to do anything else for you? Quite, thank you, said Paul. Row down the stream, little elf, and have a good time in my boat. Thank you so much, said the elf happily. He headed down the stream again and rowed off quickly, singing the little song in his high silvery voice. Paul watched till he was out of sight. Then he ran home, wondering what his mother would say when he showed her the ring. She couldn't believe her eyes at first. She took it from Paul and looked and looked at it. Oh, Paul, she said, my lovely ring. You found it for me, you clever, clever boy. How glad I am. I didn't find it, said Paul, and he told his mother all that had happened. She was astonished. So you gave the elf your birthday boat, she said. You're a nice boy, Paul. It is good to be unselfish. And do you know what his mother did? She was so pleased to have her beautiful ring back that she went straight to the toy shop and bought a big sailing ship for Paul, the very one that he had always longed to have. So I've got the ship after all, cried Paul when he saw it. Oh, I really am the luckiest boy in the world. But I think he deserved it, don't you? <laughs>